Dear students, in this lecture, we shall try to see how natural exponential functions can be used to assess the population growth rate. Now, you can see in this um, situation that we are given a certain function. And that function is composed of two variables, that is the population and time. We can expect time to be dependent upon, uh, the population to be dependent upon time. And this P0 is actually showing the initial level of population, the point in time where we started our analysis. And the exponential component of this uh, equation is e raised to the power kt. We know about t already, that t is time in years. However, this k is a variable or a parameter that we need to understand, actually it is the growth rate. Now, if we are considering uh, t is equal to zero, we can get some numerical values which have real life interpretation. Uh, assuming t is equal to zero, as we just assumed, uh, in year 2000, p is equal to, p naught is equal to 98, 632 units. So the population at the beginning of analysis is this. Now we are assuming another point in time and that is after five years. And we are to see how population has changed. Uh, for that, definitely it's very easy to put the value equal, uh, value of t is equal to five and we get a certain answer. Now, these two values can actually help us to get to the value of k, which then can be used to, you know, forecast many other values. Now, what we are trying to do here is to put these values in the um, equation that we were given above. This data is going to allow us to get to the value of k. You can see that this is the value of the population after five years and this is the value of p naught that we just found and t is five as we are assuming that t is equal to five now this k can be found and for that we have to go through a little bit of algebraic calculations and we can see that in the next slide and we'll get to that but the answer in this case after all the calculations is this so this is the uh, meaningful um, outcome of this exercise that now we know the growth rate and it is 2.02 percent now let us just have a glimpse of these steps that are conducted to get the value of k now these are those steps we started with this situation right and then we did a little bit of uh, jugglery we brought this value down there and afterwards we are taking log and we should remember that in order to get rid of e because the unknown, which is k, it is not in the base, it is in the power. When it is in power, we have to bring it down to the base in order to know its actual value or original value, not the value of its power or the value of something else with it being in its exponent. So this is why this k needs to be brought down. And in order to get rid of e, we simply take natural log on both of the sides. When we do that, e and natural log, they get cancelled out. Regardless of the fact that 5 is still there, we can find the value. And that is very simple by getting this 5 to the other side. Here it is. And finally, we will get the value of k. So you can pause the video or you can do this step if you know already how to do this simple calculation. However, the objective is achieved and that is the rate of growth. Now, this growth rate can help us to assess various levels of population at various points in time, as you shall see in the next slide. We are using t is equal to 10. Now, we are trying to forecast the population after 10 years. And now it is easy because now we have the value of k. The growth rate is now available simply by putting this value and putting the other value that is the initial population we can get the value of the population in the 10th year. Another angle of analysis could be that we can try to find out time instead of the population. And that time that is required for the population to get double. 
and we have to do some assumptions and there they are. We assume that T or capital T to be more specific is the time which is required for the population to get up. And the double population as compared to the initial population would be the product of 2 and the initial population. Now we have the numerical value of that. And we can put this value here, assuming that this is the double population and T will be replaced with a capital T, capital T, which is now the required variable. After doing these steps, we shall get the value of the time which is required for the population to get double. In this way, we can do the analysis from one side or the other. One variable can become the target or we can make the other variable a target in this case of natural exponential functions. And for the details of the steps that we did in order to get the value of this capital T, you can see this slide, you can pause the video or you must rehearse how we have actually achieved this value of capital T. As you can see, the answer is as we have noted there, it's having more detail and to see in here, but definitely as you Rehearse it, you will come up with an answer which might be of having three or four decimal places of the answer.